All right, cold cuts. We're back. Very special guest. Very Extremely special guest. Special. Dude, I actually shouldn't have started recording because I was like, I gotta get my like gushing out before we record just so I don't look like a huge puss ball. But uh <laughs> huge fan, bro. Huge fan, dog. Thank you. You're, uh, I I've been it. watching your vids since like probably freshman year of college, dog. Like on total repeat. Bro, I'm sure no one's ever told you this before. I'm sure this is brand new, but you totally inspired me to watch Old Boy. I'm so grateful. Oh, awesome. dude. I'm so grateful. Good. That's Great like, movie, yeah. dude, one of your best reviews. It one is. of your best reviews. It's so fucking good, dude. Uh, I was surprised so many people hadn't seen it when dude, I did my I video. Hadn't, uh, you know, I'm not even going to lie. I think you've, you've already mentioned this. Oh, Mr. Liquid Death. He's too good for normal water. <laughs> he drinks canned water. Uh, it's the, the, I like the carbonation. It's kind of like, it's got like a weird slippery, smooth taste also. Never um, had it actually. Mm-hmm. Hmm. But dude, your old boy shit it's overpriced. actually it <laughs> is so over fucking priced, dude. Yeah. Dude, there was like a thing where um fuck, I forget what it was, but the it was like far right people were buying cases of it and then just dumping it out because uh I forget what Liquid Death even did, but they were like, yo, this company is run by Satanists, like we're gonna buy up the stock <laughs> oh. and dump it. And I was like, dude, why are you, epic. they don't you can they dump have death it on the can. But like, oh, dude, cool. if you're buying them to dump them, like they don't give a shit. You could dump them in your ass, and they yeah, fucking uh, wouldn't give a shit about it. But uh, that's anyway. like that guy. That was that crazy right wing guy that was also saying about the M and M's. He was like, real alpha men buy M and M's and then throw them straight in the garbage. Nick oh, Adams, that, that Nick I'm Adams not sure guy. Yeah. He's ever serious. I think his, I, I, I think his it's entire thing's a performance. Yeah. Yeah. Not Do like you, not like I expect him to have like the opposite political beliefs. I I don't. I'm not sure if he believes anything. But yeah, it's performative i agree i, I would have so. known i i hadn't heard his voice until a few days ago but he's aussie right i had no fucking idea yeah, yeah those yeah, natural funny. pranksters natural pranksters. <laughs> yeah natural but. born anyway my uh, point being is your old boy review got me into like i started with like korean foreign films but then i started like branching out a little bit but uh mm-hmm. so grateful Th- thank you Good. yeah Good. Thank I'm you glad very to hear. Much. Thank you Thank very you. much. I w- I was really lucky that like I had an older cousin that told me to watch Old Boy like y- like a long time ago, and it was during a period of time where I had no familiarity with like foreign films or even. Mm-hmm. I mean, I wouldn't. I mean, certainly Old Boy is not like it's not an art house movie, but it's like an artistic film in a lot of ways. And yeah. like I think I was a lot more normy in my like exposure to movies at that time and. He put me onto that and a few others, and I remember that first time watching the movie, which I'm sure like everybody's experienced the first time watching it, just like, holy shit, dude! I've Based. never seen anything like this. Yeah, Based in old. It's boy it's cult. a really it's a really accessible movie, and for sure. it's good it's good for people to branch out and find things that they like because a lot of people are scared, like, oh, I can't watch a foreign movie because they're not good or something. But yeah, they're becoming more accessible. Every I would I, I would have watched more foreign movies er- earlier, but they speak in gibberish. They're, it's like, yeah, you know, like speak so English. What's I understand going what's on? going on. Do you, you, you're like, totally um... going to leave the podcast after I bring this up. Feel free to judge me. But I did watch. Sweet. And I think I did it recently. It might have been in the last month. But I was like, I got to just watch the American old boy just to just to see. Just to oh see. I want to have like the live Adam reaction to it. But I dude, I am not at all saying I enjoyed it. I didn't like it. But I fucking love Josh Bro- Brolin. I could literally mm-hmm. watch him just taking a shit, and I would be like, um, well, "Amazing cinema, amazing." <laughs> kind of what the movie was, yeah, so. yeah. Literally, dude. Yeah, and those clips you used, I almost want to like go watch the interview. But it kind of seems like he fucking hated the movie, also, just based on like how he was talking, yeah, like, viewer and shit. I could see that. Yeah, I'm not sure. Spike Lee was. It seemed like nobody was happy with the final product. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Like I, Spike uh, Lee had a movie that was cut down, even so. I was watching some of your also um, when you were live streaming talking about the new Avatar movie, and well, Harris literally called me to talk to me about this, which is funny because like, I I went to go see the Avatar movie. I had certain expectations in my head of what I was going to experience, which. I felt it it certainly delivered on. And so I was happy with my experience. But when I was mm-hmm. watching your stream where you were talking about it, I mean, I know it's this is sort of your shtick, but you're, of course, like railing into it <laughs> like a fair bit. But all of your criticisms of it 
were completely on point and every and every but i felt that way also about the movie and my my like reaction to it it's like I almost feel like Avatar is one of those movies that the more you sit there and actually try to pick it apart, the more you're left with just a sh- shitty movie. But if you go in, it's it very kinda, shallow. It is shallow. Yeah. Do you do you feel like your um like your career as a movie critic now has in any way sort of like taken the enjoyment out of like going to see kind of like a dumb movie? Uh, no, I like dumb movies that are fun, but I, I, you know, it was a dumb movie that was boring. (laughs) Um, I think that if you've seen a certain amount of movies, the ones that are less going against the grain, if they're not doing anything particularly special, it's like, okay, you know, I've seen this a billion times, so it might make something more boring than if you hadn't seen it before a billion times, you know, like in a vacuum, you could, you, if Neil Breen was the only filmmaker that existed, then he'd be making the best movies. Are you guys still beefing? Right? Beefing? I, I've never. Oh no! Had a wait, beef no, it was. Uh, you thinking the... of Daddy Derek? Yes, Daddy Derek. Yeah. Are, is he friends with you now? I mean, I feel like he should have just rid. We're him. not friends, but I don't know. I don't know what's going on. He's uh, impossible to interpret or communicate Dude, with. I'm so. shocked he hasn't contacted hmm. you to like cameo in one of the movies or something. He has. Oh, he has? Yeah. Bro. Are, but it was were... like offensive because <laughs> he was like, I'll, I'll let you appear as like a photograph in one shot if you make three reviews of my film. Oh, and I was what? like, oh, wow. Dude. Oh. <laughs> yeah, he was like, he, it was just entirely, he was just trying to scam me. So, Bro, he should literally, oh. if he was a smart man, he would make you the main villain of one of the <laughs> movies i do yeah. I, literally just a picture he didn't even want you like in it he's uh he's very manipulative and uh stupid so okay. I, I don't know what to say Cold cuts <laughs> audience. Oh, you're, hear, you're hearing it here first find this man's address hunt him down no. No, <laughs> um do uh, do you feel like you're in a stage of your career now where you don't get as much pushback on your negative reviews or like do you still get hate for when you're shitting on a movie? Well, to, um, pig- to piggyback on that before you answer, by the way, I, lo- I love to interrupt. I'm very annoying. So just sure. mentally prep yourself. But you did kind of get didn't you get a little bit of hate? This is like in the same vein because you said you weren't that big into Spike Lee especially like during the old boy review that was like a semi recent thing or am i am i yeah crazy? i mean i don't know there's there's always some people that will take any quote and just try to use it as justification for why everything else i've said about movies is wrong you know there's fans of certain movies like it, it's really difficult for a huge portion of the population to accept that someone else might have a different experience with a piece of media than them and so yeah it, it naturally people look for ways to try and discredit that uh, uh, by saying like, Oh, you're not a big fan of Spike Lee. Like that as if that's like an objectively incorrect statement when, you know, everybody can have a different experience with art. It's just kind of stupid to act as if, as if there are givens when it comes mm-hmm. to experiences with art. I don't know. Dude, I think it so. Was- yeah. I, I mean, I, I still get pushback, but I can never tell what it's going to be from. It's it always seems random what it is like. I had no idea people would be defending the Mario movie when Bro, I said I did not negative things. About are you hating anything. on the Mario movie? Parts of it, yeah. Bro, get the bro. That's, have you seen he it? Is Wait, my spirit have you seen it animal, bro? No, no just he, the, tra- the, trailer. the trailer. The trailers. I'm talking about yeah. Oh, okay, are okay. you? Oh, here's I'm the thing. On the trailers a bit. Would you hate on it? If Chris Pratt wasn't the lead, or do you feel like that doesn't affect your your outtake on it? Because like, dude, I it am certainly so makes hyped. it a lot worse. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the Chris Pratt thing makes it a lot worse than it probably would have been. Here's That's here's fair. my um, prediction: you are gonna watch it and you're gonna give a stunning review. It is, bro. You can't yeah. hate Mario, bro. He's the fucking man. I can't. Bro. I've modeled See, my this is what I'm talking for about. him. I'm like, <laughs> dude, you're not allowed. You're just not allowed to hate him, Mario. Yeah. Sorry, I'm sorry. Uh. The, you know what? We'll it, it's funny you mentioned Spike Lee. I, I actually didn't know that you had a run in, I guess, with the Spike Lee heads out there. I didn't know that there was such a thing. But yeah, I no, think it, in your in your old boy thing, when you're talking about him and you're citing some Spike Lee movies that it sounds like you 
at least a bit softer on, you know, before you shit on the American old boy, which is deserved. Mm-hmm. But you bring up um, Black Klansman as one of his more like a piece that he at least cared about or, or something like that. Yeah. And w- what's interesting is that when I saw maybe this will get me in trouble. I don't really care. I I did not like Black Klansman. Like when I went to go <laughs> see that movie in the theaters, it felt like the first half of the movie was i think really focused and had a great idea and was going somewhere interesting and the second half of the movie it felt like they got an intern to edit the entire second half of the movie like it just didn't matter anymore and i was Hmm. like i left that movie like and looking at reviews and i mean it was critically lauded and people were really excited about it and i mean it had like a very punchy title and gimmick but i thought it was not a well-made movie and i don't even see people really talking about it anymore which i think kind of confirms for me that it's like not it wasn't very good i mean it's not a masterpiece i I thought it was fine for what it was there's things i liked about it it had a fun energy for the most part you Mm -hmm. were saying it was weird they made the clan the ku klux klan the bad guys i knew this was that was no what's up with that you know what i mean I I actually just thought that it felt kind of like I think it was a really good opportunity to be like really like just like great social commentary and it felt super ham fisted and didn't introduce any idea to me that it didn't make me think in any new ways you know what I mean which I I think as as a really successful movie it could have made me a like a white person come away from it thinking. So, like having new thoughts bouncing around in my head yeah but it just felt like really shallow i don't know i guess that's my so you left the movie not thinking racism is bad yeah no i was kind of like yeah it's I crazy like... how like the the furry wave has just gotten like stronger in numbers in i mean it, oh yeah it, it felt like a phase in a way like no, like maybe maybe something like <laughs> ten years ago, and it is really not a phase. In fact, like I no see more and stay. more, yeah, more and more people, and it's and it's crazy how much like, and it it doesn't even feel like there was like a huge movement of furries to try to push back on this notion. It just became completely normalized. But it's like you, I was trained early on that like people who were furries were like just like odd like strange people but now it's been Mm -hmm. especially like since the time that i've been more active on twitter i've interacted with so many people who are furries who are just like totally cool normal. i love bro furries draw the best rouge the bat porn that's true we we Mm -hmm. need to thank them for that though because they are fucking. (laughs) there are some talented artists in the furry community i think that at a certain point you know the further back you go the the percentage of like social introverts awkward autistic like that goes higher the further back you go because it's an internet subculture and you know if you're a furry in the 80s it's because like you you dug so far into the internet yeah and you're so autistic that you found it whereas now it's like you know you don't have to look very hard so there's a lot more people that are just like oh i'm into this and you don't necessarily have to be like a computer programmer to have participated in the fandom or yeah yeah. So yeah, now it's it's more normalized. So more normal people are a part of it. Yeah. Do you do I you saw, have a? Oh, go ahead, Zach. Sorry. I saw an old guest we had in the podcast who I love immensely, Party Pratt, but she had drawn you as a horse. Is that your? Is that give us mm-hmm. the deets? Is that your actual persona? I'm, that's I am a horse. Yeah. You are a oh, horse. That's okay. Sick. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. I'm I'm assuming Vosh is in your DMs frequently. <laughs> yeah, of course, all the time. Yeah. All the time. Yeah. Very the, nice, baby. Do you do you have a definition for what is qualified like what a person you would classify as a furry? Like what is the bare minimum requirement to be a furry? I mean, it would just be self-identification after a certain point, you know? Cuz like if if you know, I think everyone has some interest in anthropomorphic animal characters. Oh, I draw them all the um, time. Yeah, I mean like some int- you know, if anybody enjoys like a Disney movie with animal characters or re- relates to the character in some way, but, you know, you don't have to even attend a convention to be considered a furry. You don't have to have a fursona or have a fursuit or whatever. Like, it's if you consider yourself to be one, you are one. To me, um, you know, it is a part of my life that is, you know, pretty ingrained into who I am and the types of people I surround myself with. And so, um, yeah, I consider myself one for sure. Do you go to conventions also? 
Yep. Yeah, they're oh, a lot yeah. of fun. Would you consider Harris and I furries since we both have, I, I call them, uh, what's the word? F-A-U-X, faux, faux saunas. But, they're kind uh, of four mm -hmm. saunas, but we both have. Oh, yeah, you kind of do. Yeah. Animal creatures that are. Well, you're in, you're in a different, you would be in a different subgroup because there's like, I think there's a special term for bug ones. I'm not for sure. For bug people? Yeah, I think there's like That's a different offshoot for bug people, but. You don't know. There's a lot of conventionings. Sorry, there's a lot of conventions happening all the time. And if you wanted to, like, I don't know, sell some fucking physical comic prints or whatever at a convention, it would be really easy to get into uh, the dealer's den and apply for that. And uh, people are in the furry community are very, you know, supportive of each other, and you know, a lot of lot of uh, small businesses and appreciation for that so yeah they, i mean party pratt was who is like pretty big into the furry community was like mm -hmm. super fucking cool like we were talking and and i mean she's posting constantly that she's like at conventions or hanging out with other furries or something like that i'm like god damn that looks bro so i literally fun. get a hangover it is fun just go fucking go to a convention. yeah it looks awesome we might you know what the the cold cuts crew we might have to make a, a furry booth that might yeah be the where are you uh, be based fun. out of I'm in uh, L.A. I'm mm -hmm. in Florida. Yeah, in we're Florida in two different life. spots. Yeah. Are you uh, you're yeah, Canadian a... or am I making that up in my head? I am. I am from Canada. I am okay. currently right now as I'm recording this. I am in Georgia. Oh, oh really? Nice. Full time cool. or that's just like a visit? Um, I'm trying to I'm applying for residency. I've got a uh, few things left to add to my application. But um, Bro, yeah, my boyfriend the, lives here. And you so... need the green card marriage. Cool. I'd be honored. Mm -hmm. gotcha, okay. you, you know, it was funny, but uh, maybe like two months ago, it might have even been sooner, like a month ago, but someone in the, the our patron discord was like, yo, you got to get YMS in the podcast. Listen, I'm homies with his boyfriend. I can put the good word in. And I was like, leave the man alone. That's kind of weird. Like, mm -hmm. I don't want you to beg this guy's boyfriend to have him on. But then like a week later, you followed me and I was like, oh, bro, we're in. We got the Adam. We got the Adam contact. We're You're stuck. in, dude. Yeah, yeah we baby. made it. Yeah, baby. Very exciting. Uh, dude, I was actually very hyped to see that it, if I'm understanding correctly, that you are also a fan of the movie Cyberbully, which is one of my favorite. Oh, yeah. My dude, favorite I literally movie, really really watched <laughs> that review. Dude, I, there's certain reviews I come back to that like I watch. I watch them fully, but then. It's quotable. It's, it's, it's dude, it's so. I haven't good. forgotten about the movie. I haven't forgotten about it's it. It's an We're amazing still... movie. Did uh, you actually my get Twitter hand my Twitter handle is based off of that movie, actually. Is it, is it really? actually? Wait, yeah. what is your Twitter? I thought your Twitter handle was too gay to live. Is that a line? Yeah. Yeah. That's well, yeah, because he's like he's he like they call that. me gay all the time. They call me all these uh words, fairy, fruit, homo, too gay to live. He says <laughs> live, but it sounds like lift. Like he there's definitely a T sound there. <laughs> and so I subtitled it that way in my review and then yeah, the, <laughs> dude that the, review when i need yeah. something to listen to when i'm like falling asleep because i like love listening to shit i either watch that one or i watch um i must have watched both of them like a thousand times so you're welcome for the youtube ad revenue by the way no no big deal no big deal but there's the thank you there's that one and then what's the one where she gets that like ornamental vase that grants her wishes Oh, wish upon. Yes, wish upon, dude. I don't I, know that those one. two are such classic reviews, bro. Dude, out of curiosity, what would you say? I'm probably a fan that you would hate because sure. What would you say to a fan? <laughs> <laughs> what What would you say to a fan who's like, I you know I watch your reviews and I feel like I have no need to watch the movie. That you you probably. Would I mean, not yeah, have you're liked you're that, elected. Right? I I've always been pro uh versatility and variety when it comes to experiences with art if you want to if you, there's a bunch of people that you know prefer to listen to my reviews rather than watch them and they're just doing something else like working or animating or you know whatever like i'm not going to complain about how people watch my material or if people want to watch the film or don't want to watch the film after especially if i'm saying something in the review like don't see the movie right, right you know if i'm <laughs> recommending that it's if i'm saying that it's like an absolute chore to get through i wouldn't really expect a lot of people to try and watch it there's some that i consider to be like so bad that they're good and really funny so the, in those scenarios then sure i prefer people watch it but not everybody has the 
you know, not everybody has the patience for that. Not, not everybody has the sensitivities for that. Um, mm-hmm. Sometimes those can work on people and they don't always. So, so. so you do approve of me as a fan. It's totally allowed. Yes. It's okay. You and are you, valid. And you approve valid. of everything I ever say. <laughs> at all times. yes i and i uh, i personally endorse every every perspective let's go. Let's we got the we got the go, audio clip. Dude. yo uh, i meant to bring this up before we started recording but harris and me i'm assuming you've seen this movie because you're a movie buff i fucking love this movie but um you've seen um uh enemy right yes okay what first of all i was blown away i'm assuming you know how to pronounce it correctly because you seem like a smart man what is his name yeah. De- denny villain I, I know how to pronounce it correctly because i'm canadian and i know some french but it's oh, denny okay. villeneuve and he's oh, from Quebec. denny villeneuve if you denny can... as in like denny and then <laughs> veal as in like baby cow and then nov as in no we got we got five minutes left on this first block and just so i don't neglect the patrons we did have a couple questions so i'll bring up one this one I'm going to have to skip, and this was actually one I was going to ask you. Dude, I can't even lie. I uh, I almost can do the same thing you can where I can regurgitate things. Mm-hmm. Um, but what? I remember when you posted on one of your things, and it was the first time I saw you, you did that, like, breathing through your stomach and puking, where I was like, dude, what? this is fucked, bro. I can't watch this guy anymore. But I stuck with it. I stuck with it. I'm glad I am did. Mm-hmm. But, uh one of the questions, obviously, was couldn't, can you do that on the podcast? And I don't want you to ruin your beautiful... Is this a furry shirt or is this a band? Fantasia? Uh, it's a film festival. Are you looking for something yeah. to puke into? Yeah, I am. Oh, my God, dude. Oh, my God. Can you oh really do that? Oh, my God, dude. <laughs> oh, my God, bro. <laughs> dude, I am so fucking to the honored. The is insane. I'm literally so fucking Wait, honored. Wait, I am right completely... Can you fill me in? I'm completely unfamiliar he with He can make shit. himself puke on command, dude. Dude. Literally how? on command. He, he does this weird thing where he just breathes into his stomach and then is just able to expel whatever the fuck is there. What? Yeah. It's not... That's, that's actually insane. Dude, I was so sure he was going to be like, no, nah, I'm not going to do it, but... Dude. No fucking right. way, dude. <laughs> Are no you... fuck, we'll dude! We'll I see... am literally so honored right now. Holy Wait. shit, okay. dude! Let's see it happen. Oh my god! Okay, I'm like crazy, uh, god, we'll... dude. We'll see if I can do it without drinking any carbonated beverage. We'll see if I can just. I feel like I've gotten better at it. Oh, I need some more. Yeah, I need some liquid. Sorry. No, you're good. Is liquid death carbonated? I'm going to settle too much. Hmm? Is liquid death carbonated? If you get the sparkling one, yeah. Sparkling oh, right. liquid okay. death. So fancy. So fancy. Ah. All right. Okay. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> oh, I'm having trouble today. Don't worry. I, I will get it. It's Gun shy, baby. Gun shy, baby. I just didn't eat that much. You're good. You're good. You I'll do, do it. it. I'll do you it in part two. Okay, you do it on the next block. Okay, second block. I'm honored <laughs> like, you attempted it, though. We're I'm watching so like so closely. <laughs> Holy shit, dude! Yeah, I literally was like, I I would assume. How'd do you? you I, I'm you assuming you have that. people ask you that literally twenty four seven. Are you not sick of it? Doesn't matter. Very cool. It's a cool I'm party chill. trick. Very cool party trick. It's fucking sick. All right, let me hop in. Uh, we got two minutes left. I got to pull up some one of these questions. Here's a good one, Adam. Adam All right, wait. Oh, oh here we go. Let's hold see. on. Why am I not? You little gun Let's shy, baby. Way. It's hold okay. On. It's okay. I'm just gonna adjust downwards so that I can get a better angle. Oh, here we go. Do you have a button that lowers your thing? Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> We're going to have to wait for part two. <laughs> You're good, bro. You're good, bro. It, Dude, was, easier. Is, uh, it was easier when I when I had a lot of food in my stomach and a lot of liquid. But Oh, my God. Dude, I've I never seen I Is eaten. that like a desk that moves automatically or it's your computer? It's my desk. Oh, okay. It's a yeah, sit-to-stand desk. I got it off Amazon, and it's great. Mr. Fancy. Oh, I'm yeah. just going to grab Fancy. one more beverage. I'll be right back. Yeah, you're good, brother. All right. I can't believe he's going to puke, bro. Dude, so that, that is a huge honor. I'm so yeah. honored, bro. This is absolutely the Twitter clip. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, God. Absolutely incredible. 
Uh, Bro, if I oh, chug man. three more of these, I'll puke involuntarily. So. Oh, let's go. Yeah, I, I might grab a beer up. on the break, too. I don't want to show you up, baby. Um, All right, we got less than a minute left, but uh, I'm going to go rail a squiggy in our break, and okay. I will I will resend the link. But Dude, I got to say, I think I've done a pretty good job holding it together, but I cannot believe we are talking to you right now, bro. This is so fucking crazy. I'm literally going to you. binge all your videos it. after this. Binge Super all, appreciative. Dude. Yeah, dude. Really of love course. to have you on. I'm going to do some some furry art of your your horse for soda. I'm going to do Please. some. Do you, do you have Thank like you. an official version of it? Or I've only seen the Pratt doodle. Yeah. Yeah. Is, yeah, is yeah, it I on do. your profile? I have a ref sheet. Yeah, send that our way. Oh, you have a Which profile? Sheet? Oh, dude, that was another question is you have a... Can you ask him about his gay furry Twitter alt? alt? Um, sure, but I I don't really talk about it on like platforms like YouTube because it is like not safe for work, and I just want to. You're posting lewds. We back. We back. Adam dis Adam dishonored us by not being able to pull off the puke. I'm sorry, patrons. <laughs> but uh, nah, nah, wait. Nah. Oh, 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 wait. <laughs> Oh yes! Oh, yes! Oh right. my fucking god, dude! You got it right, damn! You conjured it right up, bro. Are you not worried <laughs> about not to be a downer, okay? But in high school, <laughs> I used to be bulimic, and uh, the puking is—it's not good for your teeth. Have you noticed any wear and tear? No. Um, I don't think I do it that often, so. Yeah, this is a don't party do trick. it that often. Bust, bust okay. it out every once no. in a while, dude. Based no. on the videos, and I try to brush my teeth like soon, soon after. So that's if you, good. If you want to grab your toothbrush, feel free. Feel free. <laughs> I mean, I could do that real quick if you don't mind. Oh yeah, yeah sure. feel free. We'll, feel we'll free shoot the shit it. while you do that. Yeah, I'll keep be right those back. pearly whites. Pearly whites help. Beetle Moses, dude. We dropped uh, an animation today that came out pretty good. We did, which is really exciting. Yeah. yeah. If if we have any people who are here for the YMS video which i fully understand because the dude is a fucking g he's a fucking baller you may he's be interested baller. in our other episodes we have some other uh very solid internet celebs on some of our other episodes and well especially if we you're dropped a, an animation if you're a hip furry you probably know yms and party pratt so party feel pratt. free to check out the party pratt episode we got new poster we got new posters a, a fine fine young lad we got you know, the uh, not to hype the party pratt episode up and i don't want to drop deets but she does tell us her official cup size in the episode that is she really does spicy. tell us that so if you want yes. if you want to know if you're wondering like yo i kind of want to buy this chick like a bra for her amazon wish list you can figure it out that's you right. Can have the cup size. You can and have the cup size. if you're interested in being one of the people to ask questions to our next guest, you can join our Patreon, which is patreon.com slash cold cuts. All of the questions that we're fielding are from the Discord that you get invited to at any level when you and join by, the Patreon. By all the questions we're fielding, you mean the two that we, we asked. <laughs> We yeah, had two at the end, break. but we actually yeah. did get a bunch more that I'm sure we're going to get into. We did. Now. We got to get into it. We got to get into it. Uh, um. Yeah, we have quite a few. We have quite a few. I was kind of happy. I was kind of happy yeah. with all the questions. Dude, very oh, Someone posted, is this a, is this Adam in the GIF? There Maybe. we go. Oh, it is Adam. How are you feeling? Fresh and minty? Yes. Dude, That's someone good. posted a GIF of you, and I literally thought it was Sandra Bullock. What? Oh. It's you in the shower with, uh, it's either oh, the... or soap on your face. Oh, yeah. It's what? shaving cream. Oh, shaving Why cream. Why okay. Sandra Bullock? I don't know. You kind of had the Sandra Bullock look. I was that's like, a great, weird. That's a great. Yo, she kind of bad. She kind of bad, bro. What is the context for this gif? What video were you filming? Is that a video uh, or just like a random thing? It's a well. It was in my Frozen Disney review. Disney Frozen. <laughs> Fitting. And I was talking about uh, the effectiveness of catchy music and how it can. Uh, <laughs> continue to stay with you after the movies ended and so i put in a clip of me in the shower with the under the sea from little mermaid playing that's close and just powerful i went with it and it scared some people because i did a scary face it's very scary yeah um, but i, I like I've, it it, yeah it, over time i've kind of learned what uh sensitivities people have apparently <laughs> some people don't like when you vomit 
on I've, camera. I've come to like it. I've come to enjoy it, which yeah. is which is crazy. Actually, you know, enjoy yeah, it. Yeah, you might, if you're posting this on YouTube, it might get demonetized for that, unless you like. We always get demonetized. Yeah, yeah. we're demonetized. Okay. Harris, oh, right. Harris is always spitting out slurs, and I'm like, it's not true. Oh, that's the, fucked uh, up, bro. That's fucked I, up. Actually, I did, another question just popped into my head from what you just said when you were talking about uh, how you've like learned people's sensitivities, and I'm kind of come i think we're kind of coming to terms with this a little bit too as our audience obviously we're nowhere near your level but like you know we're growing and i was mm-hmm. going to ask you do you feel like now that you're, pla- you're you have a larger platform you have a loyal fan base do you feel like you have curbed your material in the last few years to be more i guess like adjusted to what what's going to make better material in terms of like what your audience is going to like or do you feel like the larger audience has given you the freedom to make things that are more like what's the word interior like things that you wanted to make that maybe you were afraid to when you had a small to piggyback onto that do you ever withhold jokes or certain bits just because you're like i don't want my audience to get pissed i don't i don't want them to cancel me um no i mean like i i sometimes uh try to clarify if i have like an edgy joke on stream i'll just immediately say satire so that powerful it's people understand that it's satirical um but yeah in, in terms of like my my entire brand is built off of me being like authentic so that is what my audience comes to expect is me not necessarily hiding my perspectives or hiding my opinions or how I'm going to say things. Um, I don't really, I think most of the people that watch me, if they don't necessarily agree with my film takes, they at least respect that I'm willing to often go against the grain. Um, like you know, there was a the point Mario in time movie. where there was a point, point in time where it was controversial to say suicide squad was bad. Uh, That's and then great. everybody caught the, up to me the first or second. So, one. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. The first one first one okay. the first one people yeah. like that movie when it was fresh in theaters there were so many people emotionally invested in to in the outcome of whether or not it was a good movie because it was like dc marvel and you know all these people are predisposed to like the characters that they grew up with and the mm-hmm. action figures and then you know and so if they if they think it's bad if the movie's bad then a part of them feels like a part of their childhood is being attacked or something. Hmm. So there was, there was a, yeah, opening weekend. It was a controversial perspective to say it was really, really bad. How do you um, feel same about with like statement? amazing Spider-Man too. And then eventually people, the hype dies down a bit sure. a couple of weeks after it's in, you know, dude, that's in another theaters and people are able to be a bit more rational review. about it. Your yeah. Spider-Man two review is banger, bro. The part that always comes in my mind Thank is you. like, when he falls into the tub of eels or whatever, and he's his body's healing himself, <laughs> and for some reason his teeth get closer, his buck teeth. Yeah, that is such a weird fixed moment. Him. Yeah, yeah, it it's like what's his yeah, I don't know why, why? They did the fuck. Like your no body idea. just knows. You're a lot of weird decisions in that movie, dude. How would you? Yeah. Feel See, that's about a funny bad statement? movie. Yeah, that is, is a funny bad movie. Although, dude, I didn't think the first one was funny bad. I just thought it was like bad. Was no. there a third one in that one or no? No, they no. canned it, which yeah. is also funny. Yeah, those those ones were ass, bro. Those ones were ass. When I was at theater camp, we like went out to watch it. I, dude, I remember distinctly being one of the few kids that was like, "Yo, this kind of like sucks ass, bro. Yeah, like, this, this is yeah, not this, this is... is not that good of a movie, dude." <laughs> yeah, bro, how do you feel about this statement? Just because you brought up the uh, the Suicide Squad thing, Marvel fanboys, obviously, you know, even if we're not getting into the whole Funko Pop aspect of it, where it's like, "Yo, <laughs> this is kind of Reddit. This is kind of cringe, bro." But Marvel fanboys are kind of annoying. DC fanboys to me are even more annoying on a whole different level because it feels like they are a strange group. Yeah, strange group of people. I feel like if Zack Snyder made a movie where Henry Cavill or whatever came on screen and took a fat shit, they would be like, dude, this is so deep. Like this, this is like a metaphor for like (laughs) Zeus shitting on people. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> do you think DC fanboys are even worse? Would you would you agree with that, or do you think they're kind of then than Marvel then fanboys? Marvel fanboys? Yeah, um, I don't know if they're necessarily worse. I think they're more desperate, and so we see a darker side of them because their films are worse. That is, if a, if that it was the other way part. around, and DC was having like massive success, 
and Marvel seemed uncoordinated and didn't know what they were doing, Marvel fans would probably seem just as bad because uh, they would have more things to compensate over. Yeah. Yeah. The, Dude, what's uh, your uh sorry Harris, you can go ahead. I've trampled oh, you too many times. Uh I was gonna say, um why don't you go ahead? I completely <laughs> lost my train of thought. Sorry. Right. Dude, what's your take on the um I mean I feel like I know your take. This might be a little bit of a softball question, but I still see certain people on the internet, usually more of the trad wife wanting mm -hmm. far right people who are like I can't believe they gave James Gunn his job back. Like, did, did you think that whole thing was kind of like a dumb controversy? And just for people who are listening and aren't aware, it was like he had been making just like very crass, kind of like high school level jokes about like, I love fucking kids. I love fucking kids. Yeah. And he had like some sort of, um, <laughs> he had like a priest party, right? Where like it was like uh, uh, people were supposed to dress. There's just a lot people. of edgy shit. And if you've seen his like earlier films, it tracks. You yeah. Know? Well, that if you was see another... the, the films he was making at the time too. It's like, oh yeah, this is. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> like he's like the CEO now, right? Didn't they give him like some crazy fucking? He's yeah, running he's like... uh, DC, right? He's yeah. the new Schneider. Yeah. Am I, I'm yeah. pronouncing that wrong. It's Schneider. I think it's right? Schneider. Yeah. I don't think, I think you're, putting, you're, putting an H, you're putting an H in there where a it doesn't. Jewish belong. spin yeah. on it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Dude, that just reminds me of the people getting mad at you, where it's like. I, dude, I mean, this this is what Twitter's made for. It's for misreading I, I don't know if... shit and like reading shit, like purposely misreading takes or like Probably not agree, like you can't joke about that type of stuff. You know what I mean? I don't know how many people are actually serious about their hate or their criticisms. I think that there's a certain amount of people that um, are kind of just itching for someone that they already don't like to have some sort of ammo against them and they'll just take what they can get you know like when shane dawson got canceled i was like hell yeah he makes bad youtube videos <laughs> you know like, i didn't really care like i don't even remember what he was canceled over like whatever something like, about coming it, on his people cat. have something ridiculous like that yeah 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 people yeah and so especially when you have um, and you're, you're pro cat people coming, create... so you were like yeah what's the deal with that yeah i, I, I that, did baby? come on my cat yeah <laughs> yeah right um Based. <laughs> uh when when you have people you know like James Gunn who are hollywood people that openly state their political beliefs on twitter the reason why it was like a huge conservative canceling there were you know a bunch of uh, crazy far right people doing it is because James Gunn is outspokenly liberal right so if the same accusations were made against someone of their own political team then they wouldn't have freaked out about no it. It's, it's one of those things, really. Yeah, you know, like the, the people Gina... people are just like looking for for ammo, basically, for sure. and they'll just take what they can get. Have you watched that uh, Gina Carino? What's what's that chick's name? Uh, Is yeah, her... Gina Carano. Have you watched that movie that she was in? That no, made like I, I bucks? torrented it, but I haven't seen it oh, yet. Oh, nice, Mr. Pirate. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Very hip, uh... dude. Before, just so we don't. We're not going to be able to get to all of them, but we should ask a few mm -hmm. patron questions. Yeah, there, there, was, yes. there was a few questions in here. And actually, this was something I was kind of thinking about asking you anyway. Somebody was complimenting your taste in music or your takes on music. And oh, nice. they were asking, do you have any favorite albums from the 70s? That's one of the best decades for music. Oh, I am boy. Um, a tough call. Well, I, don't, I don't spend as much of my time like digging through like hidden gems for music in the same way they do for movies music. I just have like some comfort mm -hmm. artists and you know, if, if I'm exposed to a new thing that I enjoy, then great, but I don't like it's, I have to be like in the right mood to put on a new album. For sure. You I have, have to, to turn your like, brain kind of get in the mindset for sure. Yeah. yeah I don't want to, I don't necessarily want to just have it like in the background. Um, and so if I were to think of things that I like from the seventies, I mean, a lot of like soundtracks, um, like Haosu is a good soundtrack from the seventies. Um, I Holy just Mountain. watched that movie um, for the first time, actually. Uh, yeah, is um, I was like, I, I don't, I must have, I must have listened to the Dark Side of the Moon all the way through. Was that seventies? I think that's seventies. Let me pull it up. Yeah, Let me pull up and check. When was I was just I was hearing bits of that recently. I was like, you know what? I do actually like this. So. That's uh, a good one. Um, 73. 73. There you go. Good. 
You're good. You're yeah. in there. That's kind of a strange year. I feel like I can't think of any any fucking seventies music. I uh, except Plantasia potentially. When was I mean, there's a, there's a lot of really good Bowie albums that came out in the seventies too. Uh, yeah, Rise of, Rise there, of there's Ziggy a lot Stardust of Stardust um, is a crazy album. There's a lot of artists and genres and decades where um, I know a lot of individual songs that I'm like happy and familiar with, but I haven't listened to like a full album mm-hmm. of it. So you want to hear yeah, a great to kind of get into that great seventies album. One of my favorite artists of all time. It's Al Green greatest hits. I just looked mm-hmm. it up. Came out in 75. Fucking love Al Green. Probably one of my favorite artists. And that album front to back banger after banger after banger. Fucking love. Well, 70s it's his, it's is his a great greatest era. hits album. It is his greatest hits. So, yeah. But a lot of times bangers. the greatest hits, they still have to sprinkle in some kind. There's not really like a flow to them. Dude, you know I remember I mean? that with the uh, the Blink-182 greatest hits where there was like half the album was mm-hmm. the greatest hits. And, and the rest you're like, like, what the hell Yo, is this? Yo, this is fucking trash, dog. What the yeah, fuck the, is this? The other half of it is that I, one guy um... just talking about aliens. <laughs> like, we're fucking, you know what I'm talking about? That one yes, guy like, is dude. obsessed with aliens. Did you see now? him on, uh, I fucking, Tom DeLonge. Tom DeLonge. I think it's his name, but he comes no. on. There's a Joe Rogan episode where he comes on and he's like, Joe. I'm going to blow your mind. I'm going to show you some real alien videos. And he shows him these videos where it's like literally someone just learning Blender 3D animation could make the same video. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, isn't it crazy that this is real? And Joe, Joe Rogan is just like, that's so funny. Brother, yeah. I, yeah. I don't know what to tell you, man. Uh, <laughs> to tell people, you. people aren't responsible within their information at this point. Um, I was just going to say, I've never, um, I've never listened to a full album uh, from Bill Withers, but I've liked everything that I've heard a He's lot. Great. So I'm thinking that might be something that I do at some why point. Do I, why do I, I just that noticed name? that they're it's all in no the 70s. Ain't no sunshine when she's gone. Oh, word. Okay. Yeah. yeah dude, and Lovely great. Day. Lovely and like Day. Just, yeah, there's so many songs where it's like, oh, damn, I've always loved that song. And then I piece things together. I'm like, wait, these are all Bill Withers. He's smooth as hell. There's just so many great Great, great artists, yeah. East Withers. Seventies is just a great era for soul music, like the like the just like the golden age of soul and R and B. And I I love mm-hmm. those are my comfort. Like I love putting those on, especially if I'm working or something. It's just like so many good songs written in that era. Dude, I'm glad I was able to follow along on your uh, your music talk because usually when when we have a guest on and you start talking about music, you guys start going into like deep cut D sides, and I'm like, <laughs> crazy shit. I have no. no fucking idea what you're, That's all right. what you're talking about, dude. Um, Bro, speaking of music, I don't know if this is '70s, but you guys know that song that was like huge on the uh, Joker movie by Gary Glitter. Which one's that? Uh, you'll have to remind me how it goes, I guess. It's there's like no lyrics. I'm not sure then. Oh, oh yeah. Oh that. Yeah, yeah. I was convinced this guy died. He's like apparently he's like a pedophile, but uh, I guess he just got released from prison. Yeah, you didn't you didn't know Gary Glitter was like uh actually I think I freak. I think I did. I learned that actually from a Norm Macdonald podcast because they were talking about it like on some old episode of Peace Be Upon Him. Peace Be Upon Him. Peace Be Upon Him. R.I.P. Dude, this Um, is a, uh, not to interrupt, but this is a solid uh, patron question. Um, Mm -hmm. What's what's Adam's coolest fan interaction, both at FurCon and in the wild? And I'm assuming coolest means like uh, a good, good interaction. A good one? Yeah. Um, Hmm. I just I don't know. Sometimes people like give me like drawings or something. They'll like have a badge that they made, and they're like, "Oh yeah, I was hoping to run into you," and they just like give me it. That's, that's cool. That's cool. Like the Pratt Furcon yeah. badge. Um. Well, I know Pratt personally. But, oh, okay. Okay. Um. Yeah. Very cool. Um. Dude, just to yeah, pull a little flip side. Cool interactions. Do you ever have like terrible? Well, this is a two part question. Do you ever have terrible interactions, and then do you get? Like if you're out in public, do are people like, yo, it's it's Adam. It's Adam, bro. Depending on the day. If I'm like at a film festival, especially, that happens a lot. Yeah. Um Yeah, it depends on where I am and where I'm going, I guess. Um yeah, I don't know. Uh I haven't had that bad of fan interactions because like, I don't know. I don't make videos for like children, I guess. So uh generally they've all been pretty pretty cool that's cool that's a good sign. 
absolutely based. Uh, I, I just watched, we were talking about this on a recent episode. I just watched for the first time. I had never seen uh, The Fly, the Jeff Goldblum. So the Fly. fucking good, dude. And it, which was a crazy movie. And I think I was not expecting the practical effects of the body horror to be it as jarring as it was like i think that because the first thing that you see that's really gnarly is the is when they explode a baboon on accident he gets turned inside out he gets turned inside out which is Mm -hmm. horrifying and arguably i think the most vile part of the movie i mean there's a lot of disgusting shit that happens but that i was like it completely came out of left field and um it got me thinking just about like practical effects in general Mm -hmm. uh and i mean i can speak for myself personally but i was wondering how you feel about like do you think there will be or should be a wave of people who love movies like that and the thing you know some of these classic body horror movies that like will make a return to puppeteering and uh practical effects or do you think that's kind of out the door at this Bro, point? I, was, I, was I mean people are there are people that are doing that, it there are people yeah. that are doing it um Is anyone big yeah I, I can't think of anyone i mean other christopher than, uh... nolan does a lot of things practically he doesn't necessarily make like monster true things but um yeah it depends on the director um yeah christopher nolan's probably like the biggest name who's like obsessed with practical effects um i'm trying to think of some good like there's always great little like indie movies with practical you know what there was a movie recently um called dead stream by joseph and vanessa winters i believe uh, is it a spooky and, movie? yeah it was like a parody it's like a horror comedy and it's oh, making yeah. fun of like you know twitch streamers and there's like this douchebag who's like i'm gonna stay in a haunted house and you know bad things happen and that was like yeah there was pra- good practical effects in that um yeah, i'm writing it down you said it was called dead stream um, dead stream okay. yeah yeah they um I, if you're looking for good creature effects the same directors actually made uh the 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 final segment in vhs 99 oh. um where there's the, there's some segments in, in that movie that are like really, 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 really bad, but <laughs> their segment at the end has some like, oh wow, like cool practical creature stuff. Um, I think cool. I, yeah. I think best... I saw you talking about this Deadstream one because it was compiled in. I know you just posted that you had a Skinamarink review yep. from yeah, it was well, like Fantasia. a year ago. Yeah, was that um, post passive aggressive? By the way, I, I I caught a slight hint of passive aggression. Where you were what like, post was it? Everyone, oh, that? No, I mean, like, because me. I'm not, it's well, because it's if there's enough people that are asking me something and it already exists, then I'm like, well, I guess you know, people want to see this, I should probably make them aware of it, even though all they would have to do is just type Look the movie it. title <laughs> in my channel name, yeah. Right. But, yeah, yeah. um, yeah. dude, the best practical yeah. effects I've seen recently is Harris had me watch, um. What was it? Dusk till dusk. Till oh, dawn. dusk till dawn. The practical yeah. effect. Yeah, that's of fun. Selma that's Hayek fun putting her foot in Quentin Tarantino's mouth. Magical. Absolutely, Absolutely magical. magical. I was right there in that moment, baby. That was movie magic. I'm like, dude, that's showbiz, baby. That's cinema. That's showbiz. <laughs> dude, I'm still so mad because you were like, well, it seems like a bunch of people were under the impression that she was like full blooded Hispanic. But I feel so dumb growing up in Saudi and having a ton of Lebanese friends that I didn't mm-hmm. realize she was half Lebanese. I feel like I should oh. have been able to put that together. She's a gorgeous woman. She's uh, that's crazy. She's you beautiful. know, I I was I also read recently speaking of practical effects uh and the thing, I was reading online apparently cuz I watched the thing I get I guess oh it was over quarantine. I like had a rewatch of it. Crazy movie. Lo- Literally great 10 movie. Out of 10. Yeah, I love 10 that movie. And I think yeah. I, and what I was reading about it is and I didn't know this is that apparently when it was released originally, it performed horrendously. It got terrible reviews. Mm. I think nobody saw it. And a big reason was because it was, it came out the same opening weekend as ET. And so both of these movies, both of these movies were about aliens. And one of them was like a family friendly, heartwarming story 
with a really nice message at the end and, the, the, and we we bring E.T. back to his ship and they're all waving goodbye and flying away. And the other one is this like nihilistic, violent, horrible depiction of like an alien interaction. And that's lended itself to why the thing performed so badly with critics in the beginning. It didn't find love until it was being weird. Yeah. Which home is view, crazy. That's crazy. Which is crazy. Yeah. It got a cult following later on when people were watching it on VHS at home. To bring us back into this, let me pull up a, uh, we have so many fucking dude. The patron is going fucking crazy for you, bro. Um, all right. We already asked about the gay Twitter alt. What is uh <laughs> when you say it's kind of adult? Are you posting lewds? Because I post ass sometimes. Um, yeah, there's there's pornographic images uh, on, on my. Yeah. Do you yeah, feel yeah. pressured to um, have a huge dick with having a uh, horse persona, or how how do you feel about that? Uh, no, I don't feel any. I mean, like, yeah, it just happens to work out. It's fine. Um, That's a big dick. Adam answer. confirmed yeah, tongue. Just, <laughs> Adam confirmed tongue. <laughs> I'm a DM this sex, man immediately. Sex positive. I'm a sex positive person. I don't think there's anything that people should be, you know, afraid of when it comes to sex. Like obviously use protection or whatever. But um, I think that is you know socially, you know what? Yeah, if you're not that, prepared or experienced, but that actually um, makes me that makes me think of a question though because this has been a hot topic. I've seen people. It's almost a meme. I see people talking about this a lot online. That uh, sex scenes almost never belong in movies they never improve the movie in any way it's almost never necessary Do i you saw that take that? too but i saw it coming from matt walsh so i immediately fucking oh that's threw no. it in the well, fucking no. trash dude he was complaining about the sex scenes in white lotus have you watched white lotus by the way adam not yet i have been excited too i was shocked how I, much yeah i, I mean it depends it. on the movie there is a show called high maintenance that's just so fucking incredible and there's a lot of you know, sexual uh, scenes in that show, but like it all adds a lot of character. Hmm. Um, so, yeah, it's, for the most part, I think it's an interesting. It's like an interesting concept that, like, if it doesn't propel the story forward, what is it doing in there? But I think it also just feeds into. I mean, what feeling. if the story is about the sex too? What if there's that's true. You know, that's true. I saw. I saw a, a called re- short was, that's was it about pretty, that? Yeah. I saw a response to that, though, that was saying the only time somebody could remember that it was a worthwhile sex scene was in uh, Terminator when we when Sarah Connor has sex with who's the guy from the future. Right. Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. John no, not Connor. Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's John Connor. Oh, word, word. Oh, yeah. So that so it's necessary. You have to see it because it implies then it's his, he's the kid, right, in the next movie, yeah. that he's from the future. Yeah, I mean, it depends on how it's done. Um, yeah, I would never want to make hard blanket rules for art and uh, what good. something should be or can not can be, I guess. Yo, you, you guys have both seen Avatar, Avatar 2, right? I still haven't seen it. Yeah, mm-hmm. I've seen it. Are there any actual sex scenes? Because I'm I was still so angry, I remember, even in high school, with the fact that the sex scenes were just their hair. Cause I'm like, dude, I have a thing for very tall women. I'm trying to see these nine foot tall blue babes get railed. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I feel like that would fix I, every avatar movie. Yeah. I don't think that they had sex. I don't think that their hair was their sex organs. I think it was implied that they were just connecting with each other through their hair while they were also having sex. Correct. Oh. But they eliminate they eliminated that. You you saw that from the re-release. That was in the extended dude, I heard that, version yeah. of the first one. Yeah. Which is crazy because it. it's like, dude, we didn't forget. Like, why get rid of it? We all know. Now you're just drawing more attention to it. I think they mm-hmm. could have just left that shit in. Honestly. Dude, here's a here's a solid question. I'm gonna twist it slightly, but he uh this is Zwick. Excellent man, really good editor. If you ever mm-hmm. need editing work, contact Zwick. Um, would you rather okay. have movies that are in 4K or movies that are in 1080p with full commentary? And then to piggyback off that, am I a heathen in the aspect that, like, I can literally watch a movie in standard definition, and then you could show me the same movie in, like, Blue K, 5K, 4D, and my, my brain doesn't really tell much of a difference. Am I, am I just, like, disgusting? Are you are you able you to might like need that? either a better television or better eyes I'm not sure I'm supposed to wear glasses but I refuse to yeah yeah one of my eyes is like totally degraded but 
I, I should probably do that. Contacts. I LASIK. should get a monocle. Oh, yeah. that'd be yeah, that'd be kind of Mr. Beast. If you're watching, sick. pay for my yeah, please, please. surgery. Yeah, please. While you're in the midst of getting canceled, please God. But uh, uh, yeah, would you would you rather prefer movies in stunning quality, or would you rather have them with full commentary? I've never watched a commentary track at all, except with you. I've actually put on one of your commentary oh, yeah? tracks. Yeah. Oh, great. You're the only guy. I've done um, that's fun. If the if the, I mean if yeah I I would. If it, if the question is all movies don't have commentaries but they're all in 4K versus all movies have commentaries but they're not in 4K then I I guess I would have to keep the commentaries. You do so you enjoy commentary. Yeah, I think it's valuable information. Now do you watch that just out of curiosity just cuz like I'm going to try to copy your style cuz you're so fresh. Do you watch that immediately after you watch the movie or do you watch it like a few months later? Um, you don't watch it before, obviously. When I'm interested in it. No, I don't watch it. I watch the movie normal first, for sure. Right. Okay. Depending on what time I have or how interested I am in the commentary. Yeah. Do you have a hmm. recommendation for someone like me who has literally three IQ points? If I'm trying to get into commentaries, is there a certain movie that comes with commentaries that you think like you got to listen to? Totally recommend the Bruce Campbell solo commentary for the first Evil Dead film. That's hard. Uh, is a really funny, very informative, great commentary. Uh, you cannot find it on the Blu-ray or 4K because those are different versions. Hmm. Uh, so you want to make sure whatever copy you get has Bruce Campbell by himself doing the commentary and no one else. So there's like three different commentary tracks. One of them is just him. Um, it's on one of the DVD versions. But I think it has to be like one of the older DVDs. It's not one of my him favorite all time movies. Him. Yeah, it's just him on one of the tracks. And they recorded separate tracks for Raimi and Tapper. Um, yeah. That's Do you cool. enjoy the but meme? Because just... it's one of my favorite memes that uh, it's usually done with the Spider Man. How do you pronounce his name? Rami? Rami? Rami. Uh, I was saying Rami my whole. I'm fucking dumb, bro. Do you enjoy those Rami memes where they pretend that he's like extremely racist? Are you familiar with those? When, when, or where are those? It's I don't dude. Think it's I've seen those all either. with Spider-Man movies, but it's like uh, people just write these like green text 4chan things where they just oh, like, okay. talk about. That's like, funny. It's dude. It's so fucking funny. It fucking kills me. Look those up. You'll enjoy it. You're yeah, a swag recommendation. Good. Uh, right. I just learned. I just learned last night actually that Evil Dead was X rated on release. I, didn't, yep. I did not know that. I I was looking. I I learned because I was talking actually to my to my parents about NC seventeen movies. I was telling them about a movie. I saw that movie Shame in theaters with Michael Fassbender. Mm -hmm. like Is that the a, one where he hangs dong? Yeah, he, he does hangs hang massive dong. dong. Yeah, it's all about him being a sex addict. It's extremely dark and depressing, but. Uh, Dude, that movie made he's me a great feel actor. so bad because his dick looked actor. like it was like nine inches, and then I saw a bunch of chicks retweeting it like, "Why do men pretend like he's hung? He's not even that big." What? I was like, "I don't actually remember that." Uh, but I didn't porn realize brain. porn brain. I didn't realize that NC seventeen replaced X ratings in uh mm -hmm. sometime in the nineties. Oh, like, do they not do X rating anymore? No, there's no more X rating. Oh. It's just NC seventeen. Uh. Which is Powerful. which is pretty crazy. And there's certain movies, like The Exorcist, for example, was in some, I think Warner Bros. was in some legal hot water because when it came out, there was a scandal or a controversy that the that Warner Bros. decided to give it and slip it an R rating, even though it deserved an X rating because they wanted to make sure they got as many ticket sales as possible for it. But then hmm. you like they lied about the their MPAA exactly uh, certification. And, and then there's like she's masturbating with a crucifix and doing all kinds of crazy shit. And I, in 1973, when people went to go see it, I think there was a lot of people that were like, mm, bro. yeah, <laughs> it's a crazy movie yeah. yo real uh, quick just so i can uh stay on top of our time can we force you to come on a little longer or are you good after this this final four uh, no pressure sure. I, no can, pressure. I can i can hang for a little bit more yeah all right if you if you're gonna hate me for forcing you don't don't do it <laughs> no it's fine all right if that is we the love case, having you on i'm just having, I'm having, having a like blast bro i'm having a blast i feel like we got ryan gosling on i'm i'm losing my mind <laughs> i'm gonna go piss before i piss my pants but harris i'm leaving you I, with the I can also honor. piss. 
of asking it. Oh, well, all Is right. That, well, well, if we're all, yeah. why don't we we're all, all piss? pissing then? Let's all piss. All right, you know what, Adam? You piss boys. You're the king. You piss first. Me and Harris will will hold it down. We'll hold okay. it down for the final three right. three minutes and thirty seconds. Oh, right. uh, right excellent based, bro. I am. I'm. We got him too for much. another block, baby. I'm gushing yeah. too much, baby. Uh, no, he's too good. fresh, dude. What a fucking dude. I'm so glad he's he he was in his shell a little bit at first, especially when I was like. Harris is racist. <laughs> I Harris, was like, dude, Harris hated you got to you got to close with that. You can't start with it. You exactly. got to close with it. Exactly. Uh, we throw it on him at the end. I just love I love the movie talk. I mean, I could talk about movies. All- dude, we didn't even talk about Parasite. And I know for a fact that he's a huge fan of like Korean films and we were gushing. Well, about I don't that. even I don't even think he's a fan of Korean films. I think uh i'm i'm so retarded i'm not even gonna pronounce the guy's name right what is it oh, jong, jong yun boon uh i'm gonna get them confused because there's two very big korean directors um, well, whoever the parasite director is i'm pretty sure he is a big fucking fan of that guy I think it's a uh, let's see parasite was directed by i'm gonna bring this Hong, question Hong up jun ho Bong Juno, he loves that guy. I'm going to bring this question up while Adam is gone because I think it's slightly offensive, but I'm only going to bring it up because I think I'm going through the same thing. But okay. he's Tony, carry on cassette. All right, Adam's here. I'll bring up the question anyway. This could be offensive, and I'm only bringing it up because Go for it. I myself, when I started uh, making comics online, I was I was a much thinner man. Um, I've, curr- I've currently gotten a little heftier. Um, mm-hmm. Question from Carry On Cassette. Since you've gained weight, has your fursona changed a from a chestnut to stallion to a Shetland pony? <laughs> I mean, I've gained and I've lost weight. I'm. You look you look uh, pretty good you look, right now. Yeah, you look healthy. There, there, was, a time, yeah, there was a time where I was watching your reviews where I was like, he's put on a little mass. He's put on a little mass. Yeah, I mean, Cultivated. well, I started out like like a twig you were so. <laughs> not a twig I think I, you you were twink mode you were you were yeah like, i was a twink, twink for man. sure and then yeah then i uh you know stopped well i think it was mostly just like i started like drinking alcohol regularly i was literally about to um, ask that's the it. same thing that fucking yeah. did it to me yeah that that puts on a lot of weight and then yeah so the most i ever weighed was like 205 i think um Are maybe pushing man? like 210 I'm like six foot two, yeah. Oh, dude, no that's way, um, dude. Yeah, that's You're a big nothing. fucking dude, yeah. bro. I thought you were like two hundred five on a two hundred five on six footer. This is like that's not bad. That is not. Yeah, that's fucking. A, that not is bad. Not yeah, it's not. It's not. I wasn't obese. Are you I wasn't younger like, than I don't us? I think my BMI was. Hmm? Are you younger than us? I don't know how old are you. I'm twenty nine. Harrison, twenty eight. Yeah. Okay. Guess my age. Guess this is gonna be like the Vosh podcast. I'm so bad. Are gonna Google search it? I'm not uh, going to Google know, search. Okay. I'm going to guess it right now. 31. I am 31. Oh, what Let's is it? Fucking got go, one, dude. Baby. All Let's... right. All right. That's fresh. You're, yeah, you're looking a... pretty fine for a 31 year old. Hey, that green well, card offer. You. That green it, card the... offer still stands, bro. I don't want to get the boyfriend. Yeah, I'm, uh, but... There's some gray hairs in here, but they don't pick up that well in the camera. Oh, I'm getting them too, honestly. Yeah. That's dude, right. I don't know why dudes hate gray hairs. I don't know. All right. We've, we've forced your movie sucks to do. At least twenty more. Hello, minutes. I'm like super excited. <laughs> uh, it's a good thing we did too, though, because we we do have some patron questions. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, actually, so here's, I, here's a good one to start with. Go ahead, go ahead. Trample all over you, my. No, no, no. I guess I was going to do the same thing. So go ahead. What is your least favorite movie that it seems like everyone loves, or your favorite movie that it seems like everyone hates? So I guess it's kind of like a two parter. Um. Well, I guess there's always like a like a ratio of how much it's hated versus how much I love it. Um, Give me something I don't know, controversial. Like the... Give me something controversial that everyone fucking hates that you liked. Um, fucking Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance. I feel like... Is that the second uh, one? Yeah, it's the second one. Okay. And I, I like Neville Dean and Taylor, the directors, uh, when they work together. They haven't been as great uh, hmm. solo, but... Um, yeah, as a person that just, you know, enjoys crank and, you know, ironically enjoyed gamer. Like there's things about Ghost Rider Spirit of, in- of Vengeance whoa, 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 that whoa, I really whoa, whoa, whoa. enjoyed. Did you just say you enjoyed gamer? Yeah, ironically. I mean, no, some ways. Iron- yeah. But you know what? <laughs> like there's, there's, ironically. 
but it, it's it's fun and dumb and it's a good movie to put on for drunk people who aren't going to pay attention to the dialogue anyway. That's yeah. fair. And Dude, I remember in um, high school yeah, there's, that there's... scene where he needs to like there's something where he needs to get a car to run but he can't get gas so he just drinks a bunch of ethanol or like some sort of alcohol and then pees into the the uh Oh, I don't remember that. Dude, he pees into the fuel tank after drinking a bunch of alcohol, and then the car works. And I remember in high school being like, "Are you sure that's the I, same dude, movie?" I promise. That's it's Gerard Gerald Butler, right? Gerard Butler, yeah. Bro, look it up after we talk. I guarantee you. Okay. In high school, I remember being like, <laughs> "Send me a dude, clip." This guy's a genius. I remember literally as soon as I got my car, I've had moments where like I was low on gas, especially with how high gas prices are now. Where I was like googling is it possible to drink alcohol and then pee into a gas fucking container and make it work no. but uh i Turns guarantee out, you, you so cannot fresh. uh no but i i i think that um people's expect i i enjoyed ghost rider spirit of vengeance more than i enjoyed the first one the first one was really boring and bland ghost rider spirit of vengeance the effects look better it's Nick Cage doing the mocap for the suit, so it's his performance instead of like this weird hand animated shit from the first one. Huh. Um, but the... again, this is this is more of a ironic enjoyment, I'm assuming, right? I would I would say some parts ironic, but there's some parts I really actually do appreciate about Ghost Rider: Spirit of Vengeance. Um, okay. Dude, this so is yeah, the, the, first the effects time you're, look much better, like practically. Um, I think that maybe there's like some tone issues with it for sure. Uh, not every moment lands, but uh, I don't know. The villain was intimidating. They had those weird like trip out sequences where he like sucks people's souls and stuff. Like there was some cool visual stuff going on. Um, and most people don't recognize that uh, a lot of the effects in the movie were done like really practically. And they were like they had the the director basically being like thrown off a cliff with the camera and shit. You know, like it, there's That's some crazy. cool efforts that they made that's some time uh, in the shit, film bro. that like unfortunately just doesn't translate to the final product for most people i guess hmm. dude this was the first time i was able to tell you were canadian because i think you just said a boot oh yeah but uh oh yeah i don't know if i did i think you did i think you did <laughs> about about a boot, a boot. A boot. um Harris, dude, save that boot from now on for the rest of the show just okay so he, i will so he feels comfortable okay. so he i will feels comfortable. yeah yeah, I, yeah. Uh, d dude, I saw I, I rewatched. I think I've talked about it on pod fairly recently, but I did a rewatch of the movie Disturbia, like the 2006 mm -hmm. or seven movie with Shia LaBeouf. And it was one of those that I saw it when I was in middle school when it first came out, basically. Uh, remember watching it like I, I probably had like a sleepover with some of my friends or something and then like and liked it, thought it was good. And then I think it was back on streaming like fairly recently. And I was like, I wonder if this movie is still good no. or if it was no, or something not. like that you know what i enjoyed it watching it this time around and i, I was surprised like, i was surprised like... that i liked it because i thought like even though i think i liked it for how badly it had aged if that makes sense like it became mm -hmm. an unintentional time capsule. time capsule for the time period yeah. and i think like there's a nostalgia factor for it like i'm sure somebody who didn't who wasn't like a young teen during that time period probably would not give a shit about the movie but i think like when i watched it i was surprised to be like this is not horrendous like it's actually kind of it's a little schlocky but in a charming way yeah anyway have you I seen like rear window i have seen rear window is that the movie. johnny depp yeah. one no am i confused no this? that that okay. there is a I'm johnny idiot. depp one Excellent. that's called uh, you're thinking secret window that's yes. it that's there we it. go there yeah. we go yeah <laughs> Dude, how do you feel about, um, well, you know what? I was going to ask a certain question, but I think I'm going to ask this one first. Um, do you ever worry? And it sounds like, I mean, we, we've kind of brought this up two different times, but it sounds like when you do a review, you're just like, yo, this is my opinion. This is me. I'm not going to censor myself. Do you mm -hmm. ever have a lingering fear about becoming too nitpicky? Because I know there's a lot of people, um, what are they called? It's like Scarlet Sins or something. There's some the Cinema Sins? Cinema Sins. They're, and they get a lot of flack because it's like, dude, you're being so nitpicky. And hmm. um, they're not even, they, they don't exist to provide like a perspective on the movie. They just exist to 
point out flaws you know, and say, shit. say ding like they're, they're that's not i don't they don't even consider it to be like an actual criticism yeah so but do, do you they're just they're literally just shit? making money like that's it because mo- mm. you know what i have never felt that way about you where it's like he's being nitpicky it's felt like most of the things mm. you've brought up have been real except and i watched this for the first time literally less than a week ago and this is coming from someone who hasn't seen the movie, but all the fucking Disney remake live action stuff just looks so stupid. Mm-hmm. And I'm right there with you that the Lion King one looked dumb. But there was Horrendous. a part in your review where you were like, yo, I think it was during the Scar song, but you were bringing up where you were like, yo, they clearly auto-tuned it right here and they, they kind of fucked with the song or whatever. And I was kind of like, and I, I have a musical background, okay? Mm-hmm. I, I like grew up playing violin and piano and i literally you would play the clips side by side and i could not tell that it was uh not auto-tuned but like tweaked pitch shifted yeah but that was the one time i've seen your reviews where i was like he's being kind of nitpicky but do you worry about that at all and probably not i mean i i think that anyone who listens to it and can tell the difference would probably not think i was being nitpicky and that's not to like insult you or your you know your ear for music or whatever insult me um, but I think I think that generally where people draw the line for what is nitpicky is what they find to also be bothersome about a movie, which, you know, some or, or something that they don't. Right. So uh, in that review format where I'm literally, you know, going through the whole thing with a fine tooth comb um, and dissecting it, um, you know, if I find it interesting to talk about, I'm going to talk about it. Um, and to be perfectly honest, like that, the the pitch shifting, and it was in the Just Can't Wait to Be King song. That was something that as soon as I heard the um, 2019 recording, so before the movie was even out and they just released the soundtrack, that was something that was like incredibly apparent and grating to me. Hmm. Um, I'm really sensitive when it comes to like uh, pitch in music and whether or not it like fits the chord. And so, yeah, like I think that you know, something like that where the um, sometimes I have to kind of uh, anticipate arguments that would be made against what I'm saying. So the anticipated argument would be like, oh, well, they changed the note, but that could have just been intentional. So, you know, I did go through the other language tracks and be like, oh, what a coincidence The John Favreau track is a different note than all the other language tracks. Mm-hmm. And they all did it the way that the 94 movie did and John Favreau's didn't. Yeah, I remember. Um, I, I think remember that the makes one it more apparent in a, was most an argument apparent. that I'm saying it was unintentional. The hmm. Japanese one was the most apparent, I think. Right? Am I? Am I remembering that correctly? What do you mean by that? Because you played the. Because you were said you were comparing it to the foreign films and the Japanese one. Uh, I used a lot of uh, audio from the Japanese one, talking about like the voice acting performances. Also. Yeah. 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 But yeah. that the, that uh... was the one where I listened to it and I was like, okay, he might have a point. You might have a point there. I think. Well, mm-hmm. I think that there there is validity to it because it's like the devil is in the details. At the end of the day, it's like I I, I get that same way. I was trying to think of an example of this, but I nothing came to mind. But I do get that way. And I mean, even that little thing with like we were talking about where Jamie Foxx's tooth gets fixed in the eel tank or something like that, where it's like something like that. Even that even that is like bigger than what I'm talking about. But when I'm watching a movie and there's like a little thing that I'm just like, why the fuck did you guys do that this way it does pull me out it does throw me out i i also think that it helps to justify the format of me talking about the movies in the first place if i'm only talking about things that are really obvious and apparent to everybody then i don't really have much of a purpose on the platform right and um sometimes it's just more entertaining and sometimes there's more you can get out of a movie when you go through it in detail like that by getting out of it, I mean, if the movie's really bad or even if the movie's really great. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't, I would consider that to be nitpicky if I had no other things negative to say about the movie. And I was acting as if that was ruining the whole thing, even though it lasted a fraction of a second in the mm-hmm. overall runtime, that would be nitpicky to me, but you know, it's, it's to me, including in my review is just like, oh, yeah, here's another one to add to the pile, you know? Yeah, so you're pretty like much liter- saying... literally everything about the movie is wrong, like li- literally everything. 
It's right. You're saying I'm a huge idiot, pretty much. <laughs> I do. Yes. Dude, John Dude. Oliver was the worst part of the uh and again, I haven't even seen the movie. That's pretty bad. Review, oh, but the God. John Oliver thing was like ready to blow my brains. Who did he God. play in who did he play in the movie? Zazu. Zazu. Oh, God, that is that's such Zazu. a Zazu. That's such a step down Zazu. from uh who's Mr. Bean again? What's that actor's name? Um Rowan Atkinson. Rowan Atkinson. Rowan, what a yeah. step down. Rowan Atkinson all the way to why don't they just get yeah. Rowan to do it again? One one of them's an actor. Yeah, yeah. What the hell were they thinking? <laughs> I gotta, uh, I gotta come out and say I fucking hate John Oliver. And there was a period in time in 2016 where it was very popular. I think it was very yeah. popular, but there would be people who would be like, "Yo, you gotta see this John Oliver." Yeah, yeah. And he was I was trending. like, "Dude, please put a gun in your mouth and pull the <laughs> pull the trigger, dude." I please do not send me John Oliver videos, bro. I find him so mm-hmm. great, but. That could just be because I'm I am a not a wise man. Dude, well, I, I had a question. Oh, oh go ahead. No, no, no. You, I, you, my friend, please. Uh, where, where do you think? I mean, this is maybe an obvious question, but where do you think like award shows are headed, like the Oscars and things? Do you think that those are going to get canned in the next few years, or are they going to keep clinging to life? I mean, I'm fine with them continuing <laughs> to exist, but the problem with most award shows is that they're also trying to uh make money off of them as a business model for like live viewers and advertisers Mm -hmm. and so you know something like the grammys there's a gigantic disconnect between the type of music that i listen to and the type of music that gets awarded for the grammys because you know like they it's not just about oh we're we're trying to award the best music in a year it's also about like oh who are we going to get to show up so that more people stay on television to watch this right same thing exists with the Oscars, although I'm glad that, um, you know, there, there's been some years, this year is a pretty decent one, where um, what is a popular film also lines up with what is like art- artistic and, uh, you know, important and, you know, what, what I would consider to be one of the best movies of the year. So, you Elvis. know, like everything everywhere all at once has got like 10 nominations or some shit. Yeah. That Should was- I watch that? And like everything everywhere was great. I love that. Yeah, it's great. Okay. okay. Yeah, it's yeah. it's very easily accessible. It's you know, it's a movie that everybody loves pretty much. So yeah. Um and yeah, that's a good thing. So uh yeah, if we're talking about the Oscars as like a a television event, like just fucking get rid of it. But if we're talking about like, you know, seriously awarding the best films of the year, then I don't see why that, that shouldn't sense. continue, I guess. I Dude, just couldn't I believe say, uh... that Elvis won anything. That El- that Elvis movie fucking sucked. I mean, it hasn't won anything yet. Oh, it has? I thought it won. It's nominated thought for won. a bunch. Dude, oh, people I thought he won. Well, like, I mean, it won Twitter. things not at the Oscars. God as in, God maybe God. it won some Golden Globes. That clip movie. that people have been posting on Twitter that keeps going it's very viral bad. where he realizes the guy He's is white. Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. dude, fucking kills He's me. Yeah. So, so if you look up the, the, the real life person that Tom Hanks was playing and you look up interviews of them, he talks nothing like that. So I don't know what the fuck Tom... <laughs> he, he literally doesn't talk Why? anything like how Tom yeah, he's Hanks like a, is he's talking like a the entire movie. Yeah, he's using dude, like that... some weird phoned-in accent that is not... Yeah, he's like to... trying to do me. a Danish accent or something, but it's just... He sucks so hard in it. Are you guys familiar with Brendan Schwab? Yes. Uh, yeah, the, com- the comedian. There, yeah, there's this stand-up bit. This, yeah. this, I just have to bring this up just because it reminds me of it, but there's this stand-up bit where he talks about um, one of the UFC's doctors is this asian guy and he does this whole bit where the doctor's like oh mr schwab this is going to hurt so much and just does this crazy accent and then uh i, I gotta shout this guy out beige frequency he does tons of documentaries on comedians. oh yeah i think i heard about this yes yeah. dude and it he literally pulls clips up of the exact doctor he's talking about and the guy's voice is like Hey, my name is like Michael Smith, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm I'm here. I'm a UFC doctor, and it's just him doing the accent, and it's like yeah. not true to form at all, and it's so fucked. Um, so stupid. Yeah. This is uh, a. I'm gonna funny. bring this up just because it's a little compliment to Harris, and uh, this could be the last uh, Patreon question we get to. Oh. Um, when you do your Adam and Friends episodes, which mm-hmm. by the way, one of my favorite ones again. Cold cuts audience, feel free free to flame me. I realize we've had ton of tons of guests on, and I've never been this sappy and gushy. Um, but I love the one. What is that shitty John Travolta movie? The fan. 
The Fanatic. The Fanatic. Yes, I love that movie. Yeah. Are those two? Are those two longtime friends? Or are those like recent friends? Um. Yeah. I mean, I've known Scoot and Gael probably both for ten years. Is I Scoot guess the Tiger Guy. Yeah. Yo, give him yeah. my number. I love Scoot so much, mm -hmm. baby. But uh, <laughs> dude, you are so lucky because, and I feel this way about you, Harris. There's so many times where there's creators and they bring on their friends and the dynamic is just so awkward or it's just like- You have to, like yeah, dead air. you have to curate Ooh. your friends. I'm sure there's a lot of friends I have that would love to like participate and guest on those things. And I'm just like, I'm sorry, like I have to- It ain't gonna happen. You well, know, I have to decide who's who works well. Harris and me sure. are so excited because I can tell you want to have us on for one of those to watch a movie. But no, mm -hmm. dude, <laughs> you guys have such great chemistry and uh, yeah, you're so good. lucky, bro. I'm glad. There's tons of people who kind of try to bring their friends into it, and it's not good. But uh, I feel this, Harris. I feel the same way about you, baby. And I, think I we got to flow as well. You're my yeah, boy. Absolutely. You're my we boy, also baby. go back. Yeah, we get. We have like ten years under our belt. Also now at this point. college, mm -hmm. baby. Yeah, went to college time. at the same time. We went on a double date with the chick with one arm. Amazing. Who had like the mm -hmm. tiny. Do you remember how she had a tiny hand? Yes. At the end of her elbow. That I was crazy. That crazy yeah she would break that out at parties and play ukulele she life is amazing humans That's are cool. amazing yeah yeah it's incredible. extremely yeah. based anyway i was prefacing that with the question <laughs> um well i yeah i guess i have another question too but uh trash bins one of our executive producers is asking mm -hmm. has your wrestler co-host taught you any moves and i'm piggybacking on that with is that one of your two buddies or who's the wrestler co that's scoots scoots a wrestler that is scoots oh, is clutch. he yeah, what, yeah he's do, a like, pro wrestler. WWE. Hey, that shows like... in like Seattle, and what? Uh, it's not like oh, that is so. That's, fresh. I don't know That's what uh, cool. it's called. It's called uh, three, two, one battle. I think is his thing. Is a company. He's like he's, your yeah, he version. For, like he's like my version of Harris for you because he's always bringing up racial humor mm. and like edgy jokes. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's why. That's yeah. why Watch. I love him. That's why I love him. <laughs> has he has he taught you any moves though? Um, no, but there was, so do you know the drunken peasants? Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. So he, he frequently guests on their show. Um, and one time when he was there in person, he did the chest chop kind of slap thing on Billy's chest, however many times. And I watched that and I was like, I could do that. And so then we made it happen <laughs> on drunken peasants. So he did that. Oh, and hell yeah. It left a very large mark, um, but I have a crazy pain tolerance, so. Uh, yeah, I bet, yeah. Mr. Pukey. Yeah, I know. In, I was in my say. head, those moves wouldn't translate well, though, because it's like, it, well, he do, he do, it's kind of like WWE type wrestling, or it's like actual. No, it's it's pro wrestling, WWE type, you could say. So does I? Because in my head, I'm like, does that translate? Because I feel like it's all to what performance. No, because you you're still but the. You're still hurting yourself just uh, yeah. in a professional way. So, okay. like, you're still really doing the things, and there's still like blood, and you know, people injure themselves if they do it like wrong. Oh, yeah. I, didn't, um, I didn't realize that until I watched uh, another amazing movie, which I'm sure both of you the wrestler? love. Literally, literally, The Wrestler, yes. Yeah. Uh, That's I've never crazy. seen that movie, actually. Dude, you have to fucking watch who's the it. Wrestler, who's in that one? Mickey Rourke. Rourke. Mickey Rourke, Rourke, yeah. Mickey Rourke, dude. He's so fucking good, bro. He literally looks like one of the Bogendorf twins, but he kills it. Wow. Dude, I literally have the Patreon questions pulled up, and the gif of you in the shower keeps popping up, popping up and I'm like... Staring, yeah. It's a... Sandra Bullock. That's fine. Sandra Please. Bullock, get out of here. Bullock. Get out of here. Um, wait, I actually have a... I'm I'm a patron technically. Let me ask a question. Uh, yeah, please, before I interrupt you for the one millionth time. Did... um. Did you always know that you had a knack for reviewing things or did you just like movies and feel like you kind of fell into it? Like when you were in high school or middle school or, or college, were you writing like were you a critic at that time? Or, like, or in um, I mean, no, I, I had dabbled in it, um, but it was mostly just um, I've felt opinionated on things and i saw that there was a market for that on the internet very early youtube stuff and mm -hmm. people were expressing their opinions about things and i was like you know what i could probably do that especially with you know the format of video editing i felt like that was also kind of like a creative outlet to do that 
Um, and before that point, like I, I, you know, I would see an opinion on a movie and I'd be like, wow, there's a lot of people that really love this, but it's shit in my opinion. And I would like to explain why it's shit. So that, yeah. you know, that's why the channel name is your movie sucks is like, that's, that was really like the passion that drove it initially. Um, and yeah, there would be, you know, some people would, I found myself watching a lot of movies anyway. Um, and there would be people that would ask me for recommendations on things and they would be happy with the movies that I recommended them. So yeah, I felt like that just translated into internet video stuff. It's a good taste. Yeah. Yo, can I ask you a favor? A huge favor. Mm -hmm. Yes. Sometimes when you review a film and I realize you're a busy man. Okay. I totally get it. And like, but there's times you review a film where it's part of a set, for instance, uh, Puss in Boots, where mm -hmm. I'm like, fuck, I wish he did a whole video dedicated to it. And, and I have a question about that later too, but do me solid, bro. Give me, give me a full video dedicated to the Mario movie. I need it. Even, even if you hate it. Even if you hate it. I don't even know, I don't even think I'm going to watch it in theaters. I think I'm going to wait for the... Bro. The... Really? You're not even going to see it in yeah. theaters? What do you mean? I'll I know what I like. I'll buy you the ticket. I'll buy you the ticket. Bro. Well, you you won't buy me my time back. <laughs> I'll buy you your time back. I'll buy you your time back, baby. I promise. I, I don't promise. I don't I don't have I feel, that no, I feel like if I waited for for the digital release, then a people's hype will have died down so it won't be another suicide squad where people are like freaking out if I say mm -hmm. something negative. B, I'll be able to record a live watch along. And then there will be a full video of my reaction to the movie in real time. And I, I feel like that would be a better way to experience it. Do, a, a that. Watch -along. do I have to, because yeah. I know you post some of them on YouTube, but do I have to subscribe to Patreon? All of them are on YouTube. Are they're all on YouTube. No, no they're oh, all free. they are. Oh, yeah. That's Hit awesome. the bell. You can catch one live. Comrade oh, Adam. Let's fucking go. Giving it to the people, baby. Do, um, do you ever do reviews of stuff that aren't movies, like on your public channel? Like, do you ever do reviews of, um, like music, for instance, or anything like that? Um, I mean, like, I, I live stream on Twitch a lot, and people just ask me Q&A questions all the time. So, you know, That's cool. um, in that sense, yeah. But I don't publish, I don't really publish, like, full reviews of, like, music or games or anything. Um, yeah, I've reviewed some food, I guess, just on, like, some other smaller channels. Like fast food um, type stuff? Uh, sometimes fast food, just, you know. Whatever Eureka. meal I want to make a tax right off, I make a little video about it. That's fun, <laughs> That's go. Cool. Yo, recommend <laughs> yeah. me because after this interview, I, I mm -hmm. fucking love you, baby. I haven't gotten into your your playthroughs. So for someone, say oh, yeah? someone like me who loves your fucking music reviews and hasn't seen your video game movie. playthroughs, Brrr. movie reviews, sorry. What would you recommend me start with? Okay, there's one you're particularly uh, proud of. Yeah, so the the Adam plays A D U M P L A Z E. Um, there's a recent one where uh, we played Animal Crossing, and um, it's uh, pretty edgy. It's an edgy video. We created a horsey tiger ethno state. That was pretty cool. You dropped the hard R. <laughs> um, you dropped the hard R. Yeah, nice. a couple yeah. times. Jeez. There's um. Is this? Do you Let's do that see. one with Scoots and the other guy? Yeah. Okay. It's mostly Scoot for the gaming channel. Nice. Um, Bro, your reoccurring joke of the every time an Asian guy pops up on screen and he's like, "Yo, it's oh, the guy, guy yeah. from Twelve Reasons Why." <laughs> Whatever. Thirteen. Reasons why, yeah. 13. <laughs> Kills me, dude. I um, love it. Yeah, Yakuza Zero would be a good video to watch. That Those one Yakuza did pretty well. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Very crisp. And uh, a short one classic game called facade that browser game where you just like i guess it's not a browser game but um yeah it's like a weird social experiment kind of or, or i guess what do i even call this game you you're like you show up at a couple's house and you have to learn how to talk to them without upsetting them <laughs> was it like the model really game one. oh is that the one people no. make memes of where there's the the guy with the Maybe, yeah. spiky hair or whatever i think i know what you're talking about yeah so yeah, check out my facade video or the Mario Party. Facade, Mario Party, Yakuza Zero, and Animal Crossing would be some oh, good so ones. So you I enjoy guess. Mario's party, but not Mario. Hmm. Yo, you're telling it's me this like a is different thing. Some sort of <laughs> Mario Party, dude. I can't lie to you, dog. 
I'm, I'm curious what your opinion is since you've seen the trailer. I don't know if you've seen the recent ones, but I was dreading. Um, I mean, Chris Pratt kind of sucks as Mario. And yes. Harris is the one who linked it to me <laughs> where he says some sort of line that's like, let's go. And he sounds literally like the let's chick. Let's go. He yeah. Sounds let, like yeah. the chick from Bob's Burgers. Like, yeah. It literally yeah. sounds like the chick from like, Bob's let's Burgers. Let's go. But, that's yeah, funny. Like, I was a little fuck? not. I, I was a little worried about the Seth Rogen doing Donkey Kong, but the recent trailer, I was kind of like... Sounded good. I, f- I feel like I'm biased. Though, just I'll have to check that, that out, I, I guess. I look like Mario. Oh, have you not watched that yet? I haven't watched that one. I'll add it to my list. Bro, you're a furry. You'd love it. He puts on the cat suit and becomes Cat Mario. That's hmm. good. Yeah. Is there... Uh, oh, here. okay, here's something. Is there any good movies... Or do you think there's a market for a movie that is about furries, but not necessarily anthropomorphic animals, but actually about like maybe a documentary about furry lifestyle or something like that? Rouge the Bat. I mean, yeah, there's uh, there's a lot of like uh, there's there's like a few documentaries just made by people like in the fandom that um, exist. Like worthwhile? worthwhile Yeah, yeah, they're worthwhile. yeah. Yeah. There's uh, the fandom, that one was pretty good. There was personas, that one was pretty good. Um, none that I would say are like, you know, like perfect, you know, amazing sure. art pieces or anything. But I mean, like, well, the the day will come. The day will come where, you know, just there's enough furries working on things that uh, we'll get like a really really great, amazing documentary or something at some point. I that think would be, people would be cool. surprised when they realized how many high-level people are furries. We had her as a guest on our last episode, um, mm-hmm. ex-porn star, but this chick who currently works with, I'm not going to say the airline, but she works with a certain airline, and she's telling me there's a huge rumor that the main, the CEO of the company is like a huge furry because they like constantly mm-hmm. do like animal ads and stuff. And uh, I mean, that's like an ongoing joke when it comes to commissions, like the suspiciously wealthy furry who's dropping like three K on. There's I mean, of, yeah, yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of like kind of neurodivergent people that are furries. And so, you know, naturally there's a lot of people that are successful because they're neurodivergent Um you know, makes sense. a lot of people in the tech industry, arts and entertainment, you know, those are filled with furries. Yo, this is a faux pas. We literally have four minutes left, but we did have one question come in right on the line. Go for it. I'm going to go. Lightning round. So I'm, I'm going to rewatch the episode just so I can hear the answer. But if you're comfortable, we do have a question from a guy who sends us very hot feet pictures. He dresses up as like mm-hmm. an anime chick and takes pictures. Wait, did I miss this? I have my phone on do not disturb. Let me let's take a look. Inches. Here. Question oh, we just mark. said inches. Question inches. Mark. I'll be back. Of what? <laughs> My penis? Well, it sounds like we could just follow the... We could take a look at the lewd Twitter page and we would we would know. Yeah. Right? You can find out. Yeah, well, I mean, but there's no... There's no banana for scale. For scale. <laughs> yeah. They have to factor in, like, my height or, like, the lens. Um, It's between seven and eight. Uh, Okay. But, well, yeah, that's, re- that's uh, very respectable. Do you think you. um, do you think that this is completely separate? Maybe, maybe not enough time to answer properly. But do you think there's going to mm-hmm. be a time, or are you aware of this? Maybe I'm not aware of this. Where feature length, high production value movies are released on YouTube, like strictly on the platform. Um, maybe in the future but we're still a long ways away from that i think that more independent artists are going to be releasing on on the youtube because it's a good way to like gain an audience joel haver has released a bunch of feature films on youtube there's yeah i've watched one and it was great honestly so really um Uh, i mean it's like i think you know there's so many movies that are going i'm writing that guy's name down joel haver but there's so many movies that are just going directly to streaming now, like on mm-hmm. Netflix and, and HBO. and But at the same time, we're watching simultaneously. A lot of people are turning their backs on these streaming services because they're, uh, they have this like crazy legislative policies where you can't share passwords and all this crap. And it seems yeah. like YouTube is going to... Dude, Netflix just pulled back on that. 
Oh, they did? Which yeah. is so funny. Yeah, I think... From the backlash. They were like, oh, I didn't see who that. knows what's actually happening or what's going to happen, but... An intern posted that, and it was not real. And I was like... Really? Yeah, that's okay. weird. Yeah, okay. All right. Um, so, uh, we, we're about to end. We have we got a minute mm-hmm. 40 seconds. So before me and Harris plug the executive patrons, which, God bless, we love you God all. God bless. Love them. I... Listen, we've got almost 4K followers on YouTube, which is probably twice as many YouTube followers you have. But if anyone's like, mm-hmm. yo, I need more of this Adam guy, where can they fucking find you, bro? And no need to leave uh, the, uh, the furry Twitter, the alt <laughs> furry Twitter. No need. It's all good. Uh, YMS, uh, Your Movie Sex. If you search that on YouTube, you'll find my channel. And then uh, everything else, I guess, if you look, if you go search YMS on YouTube, you click on the channel that says yourmoviesex.org, you can click on a thing that says, I guess, where where is this thing? It's channels. Click on channels and you'll find a bunch of other channels under the featured channels. You'll see a bunch of other stuff I do. There's a clips channel, a highlights channel, my music channel, two gaming channels, a podcast called Sardonicast. Um, yeah, check out my music. It's called An Unkindness. Uh, I wrote a song that was on the new Blondie album. That was pretty cool. Oh, I based. heard about that. That's fucking awesome. Yeah. Very you know, sick. If All for right. some Let's... reason you somehow watch Cold Cuts and haven't heard of your movie sucks, you got to watch this guy. He's the fucking man. Thank you. Real right. quick, executive producers, I'm just going to thank you real quick. G-Zan, Trash Bins, Brat Brat Pew Pew, Trevor Snilson, Trevor Stilson, Snake Oiler Man, Come Trillios. Come Trillios? I yeah, think it's Spanish. Trailers. I'm not pronouncing it correctly, but you guys. Thank rock. you for having me. Thank you. Thank you bro, so much for coming on. I am. This was I had awesome. such a blast, bro. I'd love to have you back on when we can force you to drink. It, it might make mm-hmm. the puking a little easier in case someone asks. But uh, next time, yeah. very excited to come back and listen to the inches question. <laughs>